Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to talk about a very important topic in the Kubernetes, we call it as a Helm chart. So let's first understand what is Helm chart. Okay, and then we will also see practically how we can make a use of it, the architecture of it, the structure of the, uh, what benefit we get it out of the Helm chart. So we'll, we'll talk about all that, okay? So uh, we know that like uh, whenever you want to deploy any application, right? So let's say I have one microservice, okay? And this microservice, I want to deploy it on the Kubernetes cluster, right? So what we do is, first of all, we identify what all Kubernetes object uh, we required to basically deploy this microservice. Like for example, let's say you want to deploy this as a, a deployment object. Okay, then let's say you want to create this microservice under some namespace, okay? Then uh, for this microservice, let's say you required one service, okay? Like a, a node port or a cluster IP service you need to create. What else? Uh, this microservice, let's say required a config map. Okay, all these are Kubernetes object. We have already discussed this in some other videos. Uh, let's say this also requires a secret, okay? Then let's say it also requires persistent volume, persistent volume claim, storage class, all these objects required, right? So what we we have to do it usually if you want to deploy it on the Kubernetes cluster, we have to write in all the YAML for, file for this, and then we can do a kubectl apply to deploy that particular all objects. And once we deploy all these objects, then finally our, our microservice would be ready to consume. Now, let's say, you have another microservice, okay? Now for this another microservice, let's say you need a similar kind of object. So you have to again run all those commands or create an YAML, then deploy that microservice, right? So that means we need to do the same thing again and again and again, okay? Only thing that is going to change, let's say this is microservice one, this is microservice two, what all things are going to change, right? Like if whenever we will talk about deployment object, what things are going to change, like uh, the image, where this microservice running and this microservice. The images would be different. The port where they are running, that would be different, right? So these are some basic things are going to change. Otherwise, overall the structure of the YAML is the standard and that's how it would be, right? So basically, uh, uh, if you want to deploy multiple microservices, you need to create a lot of files and then it would be very difficult to manage all this file. So, what is Helm chart? Helm chart is a basically a package manager tool, right? Like for example, uh, for Ubuntu system, we have an APT, okay? APT is a package manager. For a Mac, we have a Brew, right? So all these are a package manager tools which will help us to do basically manage all the packages on the Ubuntu, right? So similarly for a Kubernetes, to manage all these YAML files, we have this Helm chart tool, okay? And apart from managing, it will also give a lot of uh, functionality to basically deploy your application as well, as well as maintaining their different versions, right? So let's talk about more on the Helm chart and we will see this concept practically. So let me go to the next page. So Helm chart basically it's a packaging tool we call it as, and basically uh, it has one standard structure. What is that structure? First, we will have a chart.yaml. So the chart.yaml is basically, it's a more about uh, a metadata file, which contains your application or microservice name, the version of it, the description about it, okay? Then another file we'll have is a, a values.yaml. So I'll talk about what is values.yaml file contains. Then we will have a, a templates folder. So this templates folder is where we'll have the actual YAML files, like. Let's say you want to create a deployment. So deployment.yaml file will be there, okay? If you want to create a namespace, so namespace.yaml. If you want to create a service, so service.yaml. So whatever object you need, have to create, all that details would be available, okay? But with a small change, what is that change? So if you have a normal deploy.yaml, okay? So what we do is whatever the values of each attributes are there, like for example, so this is my cluster. Let me just quickly create one sample deploy.yaml. So how to create? We can just basically, let me just create an alias for the kubectl command. And uh, I'll just use an imperative command to generate a deployment.yaml. So how to do? kubectl create my deploy 
hyphen hyphen image uh let's say nginx and then the port is 80 okay and then i can use a dry run dry run is equal to client hyphen oml and then that will give me the deploy dot so now if i run it what, what happened uh keeps it will create deploy deployment my deploy perfect so now here you can see this is how typically our deployment.yaml looks like right now the same deployment.yaml if you want to basically use it for two different microservices so what all things are going to change the name of the microservice will change the number of replica will change the label will change the image will change the content and name will change and the port will change right so what we do is whenever we write those files in the template whatever such data that is going to change okay instead of writing hard coding that we basically write the variables there okay and then those variables value we write it here in the values dot now due to this what will happen we are kind of creating a standard template now for this microservice let's say this is your microservice one you want to create so for this microservice whatever the values you require you just specify here and then helm will take care of replacing these values to all the variables that you have used here okay now if you want to create another application let's say your app okay. now let's say this consider this this let's consider it as a my app so we created this for my app and we want to deploy another application let's say your app now for this what we need to do is we just need to create a separate values.yaml and inside this we'll have a values specific to this app microservice okay so we don't need to redo all this we can just simply reuse this templates again okay so that's how a uh, helm chart will help us to do it so now let me just quickly show you practically how we can do it it's a very simple the first thing that we required is basically uh, we need to install a helm tool so installing helm is a very simple we have to just uh, use snap install helm command okay which will basically install the Okay, so it's asking to use a hyphen hyphen classic option here. So it's getting installed. It won't take more than a few seconds. So it's almost done. <clears throat> yeah, so help installation is done. If you can see here, if I type help, it's giving me the help. That means it's a got successfully installed. Right. So now, Again, whatever the structure I was showing here, the chart.yaml, values.yaml, templates, we really don't need to create this structure from scratch, okay? Helm provides some command, basically from that, it will help us to give you the structure. So Helm, create, let's say for microservice, my app I want to create. If you do this, you can see a my app folder got created and it has multiple files, okay? So if I closely look at the chart.yaml, so it is more about a metadata information. Okay, your application name, the type, the version, right? So it's a metadata information. Then uh, the chart.yaml basically, it doesn't have anything, okay? So it's a basically, if you want to add a chart dependency, you can add it here. But for now, just to make it simple, I'll just remove that, okay? Then uh, values.yaml. So let me just remove the values.yaml, we'll create our own. And under templates, we'll have a, basically the actual YAML file we need to write it. So whatever is there right now, I'm just removing it. Okay, we'll create it fresh. Now, what we are going to do is basically, we are going to uh, basically, um, uh, let's say we have one simple microservice which has a deployment and a service object. So let's have those YAML file here. So what I'm doing, whatever the deployment.yaml we created just now, let's copy it here, okay? And in this deployment.yaml, instead of having a, this kind of a hard-coded values, we will just change it to a variable. So how to change it? We have to use a double curly bracket and then we have to use a dot values keyword and then dot the hierarchy of uh, means how you are defining a values uh, in the values.yaml. So let's say under a app section, I'm defining it as a let's say name. So this is how you can write the variable values.app.name. And this how this name we can define. Uh, let me go to the values.yaml. So values.yaml is one directory back. Okay, so values.yaml. So here, 
we are under app section, we can define a name. So name is, let's say Maya. So this is how you can define the values. Okay, so let's go back and in the deploy.yaml, let's try to use a multiple variable. So let's say I'm using the name, this application as a variable, okay, label, as well as I'll keep it as a name also the same. If you want to use a different variable, that's fine, you define it and its value, you can define it in the values.yaml. Okay, now for a replica, I am just creating another variable, let's say replicas. Okay, then this label, we can keep it as the same as the name. This label also will keep it. If you want to define def separate, go ahead and do it, okay? I'm just trying to reduce the number of that. So if I do value that, so here I'll define a different variable, let's say image. Then this container name, I'll keep it as the same as a name. Then the port will define a different variable, okay? So what all the variables we have used? Image, port, replicas, and name. So let's define that. Go back and here define uh, image. So let's say image we want to use as an nginx, latest. Then uh, port, which is 80, and replicas. Okay, replicas, let's say five. So this is how we can define. Now let me do one thing. Let me... Uh, so this way, right now I have uh, only one deploy.yaml, but even if you have all other objects like your service, your uh, your namespace, okay, your uh, config map secret, go ahead and define all this that here, okay? And then whatever, uh, don't hard code anything, just write the structure and write the variables and those variables value, you can write it in the values. Okay, perfect. So now once you do this, Let's come out of that folder. And if you just wanted to check like what all uh, deployment you have done through the helm, you can do the helm list. Right now we haven't done deployed any application. So it says showing empty, okay? Now whatever YAML file we have written, whether those are correct or not, just to validate what we can do is we can do helm template, okay? Your application name and the folder where we have. So if you run this, what will happen? Helm will actually not create an object, but it will just replace the values in the values.yaml into the template folder, and it will show you how your actual object will look like, okay? So for example, if I run it, you can see we are getting the deployment.yaml, and you can see whatever values we defined under values.yaml, it is replacing all those values in the place of variables, and this is how our final object will look like, okay? So that's how it is going to do it finally whenever we apply. But right now with the help of Helm template command, it is just uh, kind of helping us to show like how the final object will look. Okay, now if you want to install it, you can use a Helm install command. Helm install your application name and the folder where we have all the templates. So if I run it, deployment is done. Now if I go back and do kubectl get all, so you can see a deployment object got created, replica set got created. And we are given five replicas, so five four got created. So that's how simply we can <clears throat> use the Helm chart, okay? Now let's say you want to create another microservice. So what we can do is, I'll just copy everything from my app, and let's say you want to have another application, let's say your app. Now, the your app, let's go and do some modification, like in the chart.yaml, I'll change it to your app, then uh, values.yaml, okay? We just need to change the values.yaml. So here in the values.yaml, your app, let's uh, use some different image. Uh, maybe we can use uh, Rajendra IT99 slash, I have the first image. Okay, it runs on it's red zero. And let's replica R50. That's it. Now, once this is done, if you want to install, simply go ahead and do Helm install your application name, that's your app, and the folder where we have all stuff. So if you run it, deployment is done. If I go back and do kubectl get all, so you can see a new deployment got created. It's a replica set got created. 
and then we have given 15 replicas so 15 replicas work so that's how simply we can easily manage this okay if you want to remove just do help uninstall uh let's say your app and done it will go and remove all this object if you go back and check it you can see your app got removed okay so that's how simply we can use it help provide a lot of other functionality as well it has a lot of command and all okay but yeah you can explore on top of that but yeah another important thing i wanted to talk about here is so where this helm would be useful okay whenever you want to deploy your application you can write the helm chart and you can reuse any time whenever you want to deploy your application okay another thing is like whatever the okay, like for example mysql deployment okay so mysql is a very uh standard application standard database and uh it's used everywhere right so there is no point in uh writing yaml again and again and uh everyone wants to install a mysql so there is no point in everyone just doing the same thing and then deploying at mysql so for that purpose uh a lot of companies, what they do is they write the Helm chart to deploy that application and they keep, keep it on some standard location, right? Like for example, the location we have is, we call it as a Artifactory Hub, okay? So here, a lot of general purpose application like MySQL, Prometheus, Nginx installation, the Java, if you want to install, deploy the Java application, right? So you'll find a lot of people have written the Helm charts and they have kept it here. So this is a uh, open source location available where a lot of people can create the charts and upload it here. From here, anybody who wants to use it, they can just download the chart and install and we are done, right? Like for example, let's say I want to deploy a MySQL. So search MySQL, so you can see uh, this Bitnami company has created a chart for MySQL and they have kept it here, right? So now if you want to use it, just open it and then just simply you need to do Helm install and the chart link, right? So if I do Helm install, here you can change the name. I have let it be, you can use a MySQL or any, you can see the deployment is done. How to access, they have given some help here. But if you go back and check, so you can see they have deployed a MySQL as a state full set, okay? And uh, then it has also created some service for, our, for that. And yeah, here you can see a MySQL pod got created. So that's how simply, okay, uh, you and you can also write your own Helm chart and uh, upload it on the Artifactory Hub. And if people find that that's a useful, so they also can just go ahead and install the Helm chart from there. Okay, so that's how Helm chart is making your life easy to manage this multiple YAML files. And it is helping us to reduce the effort required to manage multiple files okay so i hope everyone got an idea like how the helm chart works and how we can write our own helm chart or how we can use the existing helm charts available okay so that's it for this video if you have any doubt or any query on this video please uh, put it in a comment i'll definitely try to respond it there okay and if you're not subscribed the channel yet please do subscribe like and share and uh, keep uh, learning Okay, so thanks everyone.